Okay, so what we're going to look at in this screencast is um, the chargeback and billing portion of um, the platform as a service offering on Enterprise Manager. So I'm going to log into the Enterprise Manager console with um, a, an administrator's password. So we're going to log in um, not as a cloud user but as an administrator. And as you can see, you know, you, you probably know Enterprise Manager, it's got a huge amount of functionality, but we're going to go um, Enterprise Chargeback, and this will take us to the Chargeback screens. So this instance has already got some chargebacks set up. I, I get my Chargeback dashboard here. Um, I can see um, some useful stuff. I can see uh, a summary of what entities. Now, in, in this um, context, an entity is something we can charge on. So it might be a, a, a virtual machine. It might be a host. It might be a WebLogic install, it might be a database instance, so it's something we can uh, charge one of our self-service users for. So I've got a, an overview of uh, my cost center, entity to cost center assignment. Um, bottom left, I've got a little bit of a graph that shows me how my data collection is running. So this is all driven by the metrics that Enterprise Manager collects, and um, by default, that collection happens once per night, so that the, the billing status is updated every 24 hours. But it is possible to force a collection uh, manually as well. And in the top right, I can see my uh, usage trends. That's showing me um, how resources in my private cloud are being used. And then bottom right, I can see my charge uh, trends, so I can see how much money I'm making every month. And what we'll do now is we'll quickly step through um, the, the elements that uh, need to be set up before you can get, have this up and running. So the first thing we need to do is define some charge plans. And a charge plan uh, literally just defines how much we're going to charge for something based on a, a certain aspect um, of its measurement. So out of the box we get, get what's called a universal charge plan and this is, um, uh, you can think of that as a default charge plan. And this is, allows us to charge um, against three different metrics, CPU, memory allocation and storage allocation. And you can see there we've set, um, we set ourselves to use the uh, you know, pound sterling. Um, you can use US dollars, euros, whatever you want, but we're going to charge one pound sterling per CPU per hour and the same um, cost um, per gigabyte of memory allocation and also storage allocation. Um, and uh, although we're charging per month, as you can see, for memory and storage. Um, the default charge plan is handy, but it's much, much uh, more useful, especially in the um, platform as a service scenario where, you know, these may not be the, the rough, you know, they, those are probably metrics, charging metrics that are good for an infrastructure as a service scenario. But for platform as a service, we want to be able to charge against different aspects of our entities. So what we can do is we can create a custom charge plan and you can see we've got our NGC or next generation charge plan. Um, and if I expand it, you can see we've, we've got a lot more elements to that charge plan. So for instance, we are charging our middleware as a service users based on, um, based on how many nodes they have in their WebLogic cluster. So that's at £1.34 per node per hour. Um, we can also charge users that are using our schema as a service um, a, a base charge of £30 a day. So I don't have to charge against a metric, I can add standing charges as well. And you'll see some of these other ones I can, uh, you know, we're charging for pluggable databases. Um, and here we're just, all we're doing is inheriting the rates from the universal charge plan, our default charge plan, and um, applying a, a factor of 35 to that. Um, so we can also charge for things like hosts. Um, we're charging just, we're making no change to the universal charge plan here. But it's also possible to put conditional um, elements into these charge plans. So it's possible to say, if we're charging for a host, we'll charge a certain rate, a lower rate if it's running an Oracle operating system like Solaris or Oracle Linux. And if it's running a non-Oracle operating system, which may, you know, depending on our skill set, be a little bit harder for us to support, such as Microsoft Windows, um, we want to charge more for that. So th those are charge plans. So you can set those up and you can see we've got another charge plan here um, called our proof of concept charge plan. Um, the, the billing cycle, the collection cycle is daily, as we've mentioned previously, but the billing cycle is monthly. And if you make a change to a, um, a charge plan within that billing cycle, you do need to make a new revision. You can see we've got um, start dates for these up to the current date, um, and we haven't obviously made any revisions yet, but it is possible to make revisions and alter charge plans. 
So the second element that we need to set up is what we call cost centers. So cost centers would ideally map to something in the business, so either a development group, um, a project, um, perhaps a department. Um, we can import these cost centers into Enterprise Manager from a corporate LDAP service. It's possible to pull those in. But in our case, um, we've set up our, our non nominal next generation cloud cost center here. We've done it manually and we've created some sub cost centers underneath it. So you can see we've got, you know, um, dev, um, prod, test, training, and a couple of other uh, cost centers inside that. Um, luckily for us, every time we create a self-service user, they are assigned their own cost center. So in our case, with our next generation cloud in the solution center, all we need to do is move that self the cost center that represents that self-service user into one of these NGC cost centers. And we can do roll-up billing at the NGC level. We can do it for these... Uh, nominal departments like test or training. Um, so I think if I expand test, you'll see that we've got a couple of different um, middleware as a service users in here in that test. Um, so once you set up your cost center, um, uh, your, your, your cost centers, um, the next thing is to do uh, look at what we call our entities. And an entity is anything that you can charge on. So an entity might be a VM guest. An entity might be a WebLogic install, it might be a database install, um, it could be anything. Um, for, for the platform as a service functionality, probably the easiest way to think of it is we have these things called PaaS infrastructure zone. So a PaaS infrastructure zone is a set of um, homogeneous hardware where we're going to allow users to deploy their PaaS instances. And what we can do in this case is we can take that PaaS infrastructure zone and assign it a charge plan and assign it a cost center. So what we can do here is we can scroll scroll down if I uh, just um, collapse all of these I will find my um, we can see we've got some databases as a service um, pass infrastructure zones here I'm trying to find my middleware as a service one which is here and you can see that we've assigned it if you look to the right of this highlighted line um, any entity that lives inside that PaaS infrastructure zone, so that's going to be any of the middleware as a service, WebLogic as a service stuff we deploy in there, or perhaps we're running service bus as a service as well, and that would end up in there as well. All of those entities are going to be charged at the NGC charge plan that we showed you earlier, and the cost will be assigned to the next gen cloud. It is possible to do you know, finer grain billing, so you can see we've got a couple of um, instances in here, uh, middleware instances. What we could do is if we wanted to to assign one of these perhaps to um, the nominal development organization, another one to training, we can go in and we can assign a cost center manually here. So scroll down to my NGC cost center, expand it, and I'm gonna assign this one to development. So that's that's where we where we bring together those two different uh, concepts of the who we're going to charge, which is the cost center, how we're going to charge them, which is the charge plan, and we apply those to what we are charging for. What have we provided those customers that we're going to charge for, and that's our entities. So you can see here we've also got reports, and. Um, again, you know, it's probably worth pointing out that there's, there's, there's usually kind of three, three target users for this uh, billing and chargeback um, uh, module of Enterprise Manager. So the first one is who we are logged in as right now, which is an administrator. So that administrator can perhaps swap from a summary report to a trending report, um, and we'll just view that report. Um, the, other, the other consumer of this billing and chargeback information is the cloud users themselves. So when they log into the self-service console, they get... Um, a portlet in their um, pass self-service homepage that shows them how their own billing is, is um, trending and what they owe so far. And the third um, user group for this billing and chargeback is what we might call line of business users. So that might be the managers, um, the department heads, the people that are actually going to sign the checks. Okay, so you know I can use this trending report to see um, you know how consumption is is going on, how it's trending inside my private cloud, and I can see that as we move through uh, September, you know we're we're starting to um, use a lot more resources, so our storage usage is going up. So probably 
you know, somebody, perhaps not um, the middleware guys, perhaps um, some of my database style colleagues are creating a whole load of database instances in there that's causing this change uh, to happen up to the 10th. So we'll swap back to a summary report. Um, we can do um, drill down. So what we can do is, well, I'm, I'm kind of interested really in just um, what billing's been going on, not for proof of concepts in the next generation cloud, but just, just for the past stuff. So let's have a wee look. So we can just, if you remember, our cost center is NGC. Select that and we'll click view report and we should get a charging report for the usage in NGC. And you can see that we seem to be, the test department seems to be you know, using most of the resources at the moment, so they must be spinning up a whole load of instances and doing, doing their tests. And at the moment we're making around about half of our uh, um, profit on running this private cloud from um, instances of Oracle WebLogic Server. And finally, the last um, thing we're gonna look at is the integration that we have with um, Oracle BI Publisher. So if I log in again as um, you know the same user, um, what we can do is we can generate those reports in um, HTML, in PDF, um, or CSV, and we can dispatch those via email or FTP to various different destinations. Um, there is an API for this billing and chargeback module, so if you want to integrate it with a much more complex billing engine such as Oracle Billing and Revenue Management, that's entirely possible, and you can produce you know standard bills build those out and also integrate with an ERP system. So um, that's pretty much the overview of billing and chargeback as it applies to a private cloud. Hope it uh, made sense and um, I look forward to doing another one of these screencasts for you.